So I decided to go ahead and do some preliminary fit in preparation for gluing and riveting the rear fuselage to the forward fuselage. Now, I did run into a problem here when I tried to fit all this back together. Of course, this was fit together before, um, but the one thing that I had done is, since I had fit it originally was that we installed the cockpit border here. Um, and so one of the things I ended up with here is the cockpit border here is slightly past the outside edge here of the sheet metal. And what that's causing an issue with is underneath here, there's the uh, 12 millimeter lip that's bent over here that is actually hitting the end of this cockpit border and isn't allowing the fuselage to push all the way forward to align my rivet holes. I've got that condition basically on both sides. So what I'm gonna do is just take a Dremel tool and a cutting wheel and just notch out the end of this to make sure that this will fit it will fit in here and butt up against this without it uh, preventing the skins from aligning on the sides. So I'm going to go on both sides and just trim that and see if I can get this actually put together. And I'm going to hold it together with all the Clecos. And the other thing I'm checking too is these angles that are inside of here that need to be riveted along the side here and along the top here. I had those aligned uh, once before when I drilled the holes. However, one of the things I did notice is that these are pulled a little bit inward and a little bit downward. So what happens then is when I actually put the rivets in here or put the Clecos in here to, to hold this together, it has to pull those up and pull them out this way. And it is putting a little bit of deformation into the skins here. Um, on some of the corners. So what I'm doing is double checking the fit and if I have to I'll pull the rear fuselage out and I'll actually bend those out and up just a little bit maybe to get a little bit of tension on them so that when they uh, pull it together it actually will push the uh, the skin here out a little bit and even put a little tension that way because that's not going to hurt anything and that's not going to show but if this has to pull in because of the thickness of these angles they're much stronger this skin will flex a lot um, long before the uh, angles will. So I'm gonna check some of that fit too. See if I can get this all Clico together here. And uh, since it's on, it wheel, on its wheels, I can actually roll it around. And I'm gonna go ahead and uh, see if I can get this ready to glue. Okay, you can see where I notched out uh, the cockpit border here. This worked really well. What I did is I just used a uh, you know cutting wheel, really fine one, thin one on uh, my Dremel tool. And I just went along the edge there. I didn't cut all the way through it. Um, I made sure that uh, I cut just far enough to, to basically put a nick into it so that I could get underneath it with a razor blade and bend it up. And then I was able to just break it off. Um, and then I just uh, polish this up a little bit. This, all the allergy needs to be removed off of this anyway. Um, but what I didn't want to do is use the, cut, the cutting tool and actually nick into this uh, corner support because obviously that would weaken this and cause it to potentially crack someday. So that side turned out really good. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, see if I can do the exact same thing on the other side. So the only other issue I've found with trying to refit the fuselage, uh, the rear fuselage and the forward fuselage back together and just pinning everything up is that I did end up with a little bit of a misalignment between these last three holes on either side that go through to frame seven. Now, obviously this was all drilled when frame seven was just in here kind of loose by itself. And, and since then I made the cockpit borders which were bent in and then riveted to the side here. And I have a feeling what had happened is, is that when I riveted these to the side and fit this in here is I ended up pushing frame seven back actually straight to where it should be because everything looks nice and square here with the edge here. But I have a feeling this was just bowed just a tiny bit um, as a result of that, where this whole frame probably should have been just a, a you know, 20 thousandths of an inch or so back in the center here compared to the size. Now, I can actually push this frame a little bit back. And of course, all I've done right now is um, I've drilled out the 3.30 seconds holes and I believe this gets all eighth inch rivets. So I do have some ability to widen out these holes and recenter these three on either side. It's really only the end ones here that are off, you know, a fair amount. And, but like I said, I think I can, uh, I can, get those back into enough alignment that an eighth inch hole will uh, will uh, clean those up. But other than that, everything else here looks like it fits great. I'm gonna start setting up here to glue and pop over the rear fuselage to the forward fuselage. Um, I taped off the bottom here. This is where the overlap is gonna be between the uh, rear fuselage and forward fuselage. And I just went ahead and scuffed up uh, this area here and cleaned it. Um, scuffed and cleaned these off. These had, you know, allodyne on them. I'm scuffing up down below here also. And I think what I'm gonna do is actually, at least initially put this together upside down. I think uh, it's more important for this overlap and this corner here 
to be correct than uh, the top, or at least I'm not as worried about the top because it's just it's going to go where it's going to go across frame uh, seven there. But I do need to make sure that the holes line up and everything's good here with this overlap. Um, and then I can also check these uh, angles to make sure that uh, they're tight against the bottom of the fuselage. I'm going to do a couple trial fits here just to make sure. I did have these bent in just a little bit too much, and what was happening is that when I went to put the uh, Clicos in here to hold it into the rear fuselage, it was actually having to pull these angles out a little bit, which of course these angles are so stiff that what it was actually doing was pulling the skin inward. Um, and you were getting a little bit of, you know, a, a little bit of uh, indentation on the outside of the rear fuselage skin that kind of was showing and it didn't look as good. So, um, so I'm going to try and fit this together right now. Just double check these lower angles here. And if I have to bend them, what I decided to do is I'm just using a I'm just using a three quarter inch pipe here and I can actually just slip it over the end of these and just tweak them out just a little bit. I'd actually prefer to have a little bit of pressure outward so that they kind of push in a little bit as the rear fuselage is put in because um, I'd rather have a little bit of pressure outward than, than sucking in. Um, so let me put this together. I'll do some trial fits here and we'll see what it looks like before, I, uh, before I'm ready to glue, uh, glue everything together. Okay, I've got all the areas where I need to add glue um, cleaned off with uh, either sandpaper or Scotch-Brite, scuffed up, cleaned with uh, some acetone. As you can see, I've got all the areas around here that are going to get glue on them, all cleaned up and ready to go. So I'm at a point now where I'm ready to glue this together. Now I think what I'm going to do is I did put this right side up. You can see I've got the tail here uh, precariously balancing on a box, which probably isn't too smart. but. Um, I was trying to figure out how to do this in the space that I have with the uh, uh, forward fuselage sitting on top of my CNC machine. It works pretty well. And what I can do is actually roll the forward fuselage back and forth to make it fit together, which is, it's fine. Once, once I get these attached, there won't be a problem. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply glue to all the areas on the forward fuselage here where it's going to get glued to together. The only thing I have to do is I have to go back and on the ends of each one of these stiffeners in the rear fuselage, I have to put glue on the end of these. Um, and then I also have to put glue on the kind of the inside of these. They're supposed to be glued obviously on the back side of here. So um, it's going to take me a while to get all the glue set up. Now, you have to be careful when you're fitting this together um, because you've, you, we've got these little cutouts underneath where these are supposed to slip together. These are supposed to slip together on the side. The sides are still kind of flimsy. We've got two on the top here. When you're putting this stuff together, sometimes you can have things happen like this. <laughs> I ended up taking a chunk out of the front of this stiffener here when it was hit here in the wrong spot and when it kind of got put together, it, uh, it broke a piece off. So I actually cut this to fit in there. So what I'm gonna do is actually glue this into place in here at the time that I slide it together just to, just to fill it in. It'll be fine. Um, as long as there's foam in there and there's glue connecting it all together, it's not, it's not a problem. So uh, just, be, just be careful when you're fitting it together. And of course, I had to fit this together several times to get this all set up the way I needed it to be. So I'm going to, uh, I'm going to glue this together. I've got it glued, but I don't have it riveted yet. Um, I did want to show you, I put the temporary sheet metal fasteners basically all the way around this just to hold it together, make sure that everything was in the right spot. Um, you'll see I needed a little extra hand here. So what I did is I connected a, uh, a ratchet strap to the tail skid and to the landing gear just to ratchet to just to pull this side together. I actually had attached the other side first and I just couldn't get that last sixteenth of an inch. There's not a lot to grab onto here to pull. So this actually worked quite well to just put that there and then pull it together. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I think I, I didn't drill out any of these angles holes out to the eighth inch size that they need to be. Um, I probably should have done that before I glued it, but I'll just drill it out and, uh, and, and rivet it as I go. Um, so what I think I'm going to do is do most of the 330 seconds pop rivets to just get this thing secured together across the top, across the sides, and across the bottom, which is almost all uh, 330 seconds rivets. There are some eighth inch rivets that are supposed to go here. There's also some that we're supposed to skip because of the, uh, the rear um, canopy uh, that goes over the back here, there's a trim piece. And I think that's supposed to get riveted to here. Although I'm not exactly sure. I might put rivets in there and just drill them out later. Um, there's also a rivet here in the center that is supposed to go through the uh, steel um, seat belt support that I haven't installed yet. So I'm not sure if I'm gonna just leave a temporary sheet belt fastener in there while the glue dries or 
if I'm gonna put a temporary rivet in there and then take it out later. But anyway, I've got a lot of riveting to do now. And so I'm just gonna start putting some uh, 330 seconds rivets in here. Now I put a lot of glue in here. Um, I wanted to make sure that this thing got secured together and as it slid together that it would push some glue out of the way and make sure that I got all the, the seams filled really well. So I'm gonna have a lot of cleanup I'm gonna have to do after I, after I put some pop rivets in here. I'll just go around and wipe it all down with acetone and uh, get it all cleaned up as much as I can. Um, but I think it's gonna glue really well. You can see I've got a nice, nice seam there that's pretty tight. And the glue will fill in whatever's left there, so that should be good. I've got really nice looking corners up here. I think I've bent those angles out enough so that uh, there's not a lot of tension now on the skin, which is good. Um, so let me just start riveting and we'll see if we can get this done. So I'm doing this video long after the last clip you just saw. Uh, I was editing this video and realized that I didn't come back the day after I did the last clip and show you the final results of the riveting of the forward and rear fuselage once it was attached together. Um, I ended up running late into the night uh, with that gluing and riveting that I did in the last clip. Um, and I had glue all over everything. I had glue on the Clecos, I had glue on the skin, I had to make sure I got it all cleaned off. Um, and so it took me a long time just to get everything cleaned up and my plan was to come back the next day and do a quick video of the riveting once it was completed, but now we're doing it uh, at the time of editing. So I just thought I'd just show you what it looks like. I got a nice seam top to bottom here. Couldn't have turned out better. I'm actually thrilled with it. Um, the other critical area is the top here where it attaches. Um, again, I got a nice, it's, it's a nice fit right there. And if you look at the bottom corner here, it's a perfect fit. Uh, it came out the same on both sides. You can see I riveted all the way across the bottom there. And if we look at the top here, you can see it's riveted across frame seven. I do have a rivet in the center here. I'm gonna have to drill out when I put in the seat belt mount. Uh, but otherwise, uh, yeah, it turned out, it couldn't have turned out better. I'm, I'm, I'm absolutely thrilled with, uh, with this. So um, please remember to like the video and subscribe to the channel. And uh, thanks for watching.